Today's Portrait Artist of the Year interview is, particip is with participant Tom Kofed, who is very willing to speak with me, and I'm so excited to talk to him today. So let's not wait. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up, and I will put all of Tom's information in the description below. But I'll also put it here as well. But below, you should be able to click directly and go to his links, and I encourage you to do so. So let's meet Tom. All right, today we have an artist, Tom Kofed, and he appeared on Season 8, Episode 4, 2021, which is the season I'm just finishing wrapping up. He painted Lydia West, who's a young, very attractive actress. They all are. <laughs> <laughs> he chose his painting to go home. Uh, I was very much rooting for him throughout the whole thing, and so I wanted to know more about his work, so I did a deep dive, and now I want to talk and say, hi, Tom, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and tell me about your experience on the program. Uh, okay, well, it was, it was, it was very interesting because it was still COVID, so it was, I was more nervous about getting to London. I live about an hour and a half away from London. So I was actually more nervous about getting there because um, it was the first time I'd got on a train um, since oh. COVID. So, so that was super nerve wracking. Yeah. The actual day, it was just a really wonderful experience. Everyone mm -hmm. behind the scenes is really, really lovely. Mm -hmm. um, it's a long, a long shooting time, which I'm yeah. sure you've been there before. Um, but I was, I mean, I just, I wasn't particularly nervous about um, doing it. It's such a beautiful space to be in. And um, yeah, what, I mean, what would you like to know? Well, I think the, the reason I, I ask that is um, almost everyone has the same reaction that you do about the, the hospitality of the program. And also they don't mention the word grueling, but, oh, that's me. We've got a woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> It's woodpecker season here. They they trying to find their territory, so he'll do that most of the day. We, it drives us nuts, but he should <laughs> do. Um, but you have to, it does appear that you have to be a you have to have a certain personality or willingness to do this, and it sounds like you you do. To hear that you weren't nervous, it is um, is interesting for editing. So I want. <laughs> ask about um, being interrupted during the program and did that mess with your flow or are you pretty easy going? Uh, yeah, it's an odd, it's an odd thing to be, obviously it's all filmed yeah. sort of out of order. So it is um, odd to just be getting up and down again, but I'm, I'm used, to, I mean, I don't, I don't often get a, a day where I can fully just paint without any interruptions anyway, so. Really? No, I mean not particularly at my studios in my in my apartment. Mm -hmm. So the doors going, I've got a dog, and there's admin and emails to do. So yeah. you just get used to. To be honest, the the thing about me is that I love attention. Do you? <laughs> so, yeah, I love attention. Oh. So it was just very exciting doing all of the, um, doing all of the the bits or the filming. I um I had done some practices before mm -hmm. um going up and you have a, a pre interview before um the day of shooting and they said, you know, it's a four hours but you're probably gonna get, you know, three, three and a half hours tops. Gosh, so I had already done some practices mm -hmm. and it's just so exciting being there. I wasn't yeah. under any kind of idea that I'd get a painting finished during that time so we just sort of let that go yeah and we're just enjoying feeling like a right important artist well you are <laughs> so, so let's talk about your work i i um i always do a deep dive um and uh, i find your work full of humor and directness not overworked minimal but also very carefully designed um, there's also a lot of energy, but it's also, there's a quietness. There's a really nice balance of those two. And there's a lot of expression in your portraits, but they're not cartoony. And I want to talk a, a bit about that. 
Um, so what I'm referring to is on Tom's website, he has two, first of all, he, he can paint like a regular person. I, I'm going to put one, one of those up here. You know, it's a standard sort of a, um, tablescape, you know, um, I think it's fruits and flowers or something, flowers. So what I always find interesting is that once someone really has the skills, which almost everybody on this program does, then it becomes a decision about what you're going to do with the skills that you have, what's different or unique about you. And on your website, what got caught my attention first was this series of um, culturally um, iconic performers. And maybe you could talk some about why you were drawn to painting those people that we know. We pretty much know them from, I would say, television, mm -hmm. movies and television. Uh, well, I think um, the, the main uh, reason behind why I wanted to paint in the first place was just this sort of overwhelming nostalgia for pop culture from my childhood and um, I did a fine art degree and during my degree I graduated in 2009 and during my degree I was so um, overcome with a fear of um, dying. Really? <laughs> there, was no, there was nothing wrong with me. Yeah. I was just so so concerned with sort of the ending of life yeah. that I wanted to preserve these memories that I had of these shows that I loved. So that was the um, the main starting point of why I started painting the pop culture um, actors and actresses. And I think it's developed more as I've gotten older that it's become more of a celebration of those shows and less of a sort of desperate need to halt time in some way. Um, so I just... I just paint the shows and the, the people that I love that, mm -hmm. and that's where, it, that's where it began. I didn't actually very much during my degree, um, it was a fine art degree, but I didn't actually paint very much during um, my degree. I was much more interested in um, initially embroidery and then I moved on to filmmaking oh, wow. and it wasn't until I graduated and I didn't have all of the equipment. I, I was like, you you probably need to get back to painting. I'd sort of put it on hold. Um, so it was that time afterwards <clears throat> that that has developed more and more. Okay, so you're very familiar with imagery and moving imagery. Yeah. And although you use the word desperation, um, it sounds like it was very comforting for you as well. To Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a main, the main comfort that in some way celebrating these shows or these actors yeah. that had finished or had passed away was in a way somehow ensuring that they would be remembered mm -hmm. and in I would be remembered once I also died. <laughs> Which we will. Yeah. Um, and, um, so that would have been before 2010 or around, we're talking almost like 13, 14 years ago. So yeah. Now in my head, I'm picturing that the next series, which is this pop cultural phenomenon series, which is more like, um, um, what do you call it when those, I can't, oh, so the word is gone for me now, when those um, celebrity foot photographers catch people unaware. Oh, the paparazzi. Thank you. I, the word just escaped me for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that came next or did they come together? At the same uh, so that was um, more of a, a recent development. So I had a solo exhibition last year. So I started working on those in maybe 2020, early 2022. Yeah. And um, I think my interest had, um, so I went full time as an artist in 2020. Wow. I was doing it part time before. And um, what I realized once I became full time, which is obviously what I've always wanted, yeah. is that I got to working full time and then was suddenly like, oh, now I have everything that I thought I wanted and I still don't feel oh. fulfilled entirely. Yeah. And it, it got me thinking about, um, you know, celebrity culture, a yeah. lot of 
people in the public eye are wanting the attention and then in their private lives whilst they're out and about they don't want that attention anymore so they've seemingly got everything that they wanted and now they're fighting against it a little bit so I was just more interested in the the private persona rather than the public persona which had been the um, I think that's a fascinating um, thing to, to think about and ponder my, my question for you is um, as time has gone by during those y years, the selfie and Instagram and the instant images have become even more so than they did when the paparazzi was doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, anyone walking past a celebrity can do that. Do you mm -hmm. have any comments or have you thought at all about how it's changed the way you want to show um, hmm. in, in portraiture or, or are, is it just that we've base the rest of us have joined the game you are already in of looking at these images and seeing the duality of the personal and the public. Yeah. It's an odd one, isn't it? That we're also, um, available and we're all public facing now. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, as, um, I think the idea of celebrity is, is much less appealing to me as I've gotten older. I always obviously like most people thought wouldn't it be amazing to you know be, in, be famous and, and get everything you want and now it truly seems like an absolute nightmare and so I, I think my even pre sort of the selfie and social media I'd already started thinking you know this doesn't doesn't seem like like it would be that brilliant um so yeah I think I think probably my relationship with celebrity has changed as we all become more sort of public facing. Back, back we go. So, oh, one of the things I did want to ask you about the program, and I don't talk about this very much with the judging because we know it's subjective. We know we have problems with the program. It's a love-hate relationship. I always say we love it like we love our children. You know, it has its faults, but we love it. But I felt, and one of the reasons that I really wanted to talk to you was I, the first time you came to my attention was you're holding that self-portrait of yourself. And I thought, he's got the goods. And then I thought, but they're not going to accept it because he's not treating the portrait like it's a formal event. Even though they say they want something different, and I know that they do, and they don't like traditional, like, Renaissance-ish kind of painting. The minute I saw it, I thought, there's it, there's too much freedom here. First of all, and it looks like he's having fun. <laughs> They're not going to honor this. I, is that, did you have any feelings about that when it came to that day? Or maybe I'm talking about the judging. I don't know. Well, that, I mean, that was really why I wasn't nervous at all. Because really? before, I knew before going in, I could make the best painting I've ever painted and they weren't going to choose it. Like, and it, yeah. you've obviously watched, you've watched a lot of the shows as well. So, you know, like you can tell pretty much from the moment they reveal the portraits which ones they're going to choose and I just knew they weren't going to pick mine so I wasn't I wasn't worried I wanted to my main objective going on to the show was to make a painting that my mum wouldn't be embarrassed to see on telly my mum's very nice and she would I could have painted anything she would have said it was very nice but I yeah. thought if I could finish the day and not have embarrassed my mum yeah. then I feel, I feel completely fine so yeah I already knew I was surprised that it was picked in the first place, my portrait. I'd applied one other time a few years prior. Mm -hmm. um, so I was already surprised and just chuffed that I got to be on the show. Yeah. But yeah, there was no, there was no uh, concerns that I might blow it and they, they might have chosen it because I knew they wouldn't anyway. <laughs> I'm thrilled to see it because I thought, uh, for me, it was very fresh and it wasn't... Well, uh, and, I, of course, I'll put the image here so people can see. And then the one that I really I, I adore is the painting you have, a painting of you holding the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Meta. Um, but I thought um, sometimes that's a little bit lacking in the program. A, a bit is like a, a sense of humor, you know, to, to say, you know, yes, we're doing this and we're taking it seriously, but we're, we can also have fun with it. Yeah, I think that's, um, yeah. that's the key to mm -hmm. my 
work in general is I take it very seriously. I work very hard every single day. But I mean, it's not, it's not, it's just not that serious. You know, I'm just making some nice paintings that people might like. I can't, I can't talk about it in a way that, you know, I'm changing the world or yeah. it's just, it should be a fun thing. I feel very lucky that I get to be able to paint. So I can't be a tortured, I just yeah. can't do that. So the next thing I want to talk about that maybe I'm making assumptions, but I picked it up from your website, which is in a sense, some of how someone wants to present their persona. You know, we all have a private self and a persona self, but um, you seem to have a commitment to affordable art. Mm -hmm. When I went on there, I thought, oh my goodness, I can own a Tom painting. Yeah. <laughs> I can own a Tom print. Okay. You, and you, so many people um, have, have strong feelings about, about that. I'm going to put that aside for a minute because at the end of the day, I, I do consider each one of us a business, very similar to owning a bakery. In other words, you know, unless you produce a product and unless you're selling a product, you don't have money to buy flour and sugar. Mm -hmm. and so <laughs> I hate to say it, but, yeah. um, so, um, what made me think of that? Uh, Oh, but many of us lose control of our images by either joining sites like ImageKind, Redbubble. Um, I, could, I, I can't even think of them all, but there are many, many sites that will take a cut of your image and a considerable cut as well as a charging you a fee. It's very similar to a gallery, only of course what they have to, they only have to upload the image. There's really, um, but I don't think you've done that. You seem to be in control of your imagery. Is that true? Or are you? I, I mean, I, I hope so. So I have, um, it's really, it's really important to me that my art's affordable. Um, so like you say, you, I think a lot of people can afford an original painting yes. um, from me in general. I also have a pay as you go system. So people don't have to pay all in one big chunk. They yeah. can pay me as they can afford it. And I'll put the painting to one side. Um, and then I also do make my work into prints and various other products and I have a, a shop on my website and I do, I do also have an Etsy shop and they obviously take a fee. Um, but I make all of the products myself, um, in my studio. So, yeah, I think I, I mean, I hope I've still got control of, they're not, they're not everywhere on the internet. They're only, you know, in my shop and my, I was just really impressed with the business side of that. Uh, yeah, because um, uh, many, many people don't want to be bothered with that. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think I read a statistic on something like only 3% of the population actually buys an original painting. So that's 7% yeah. of the population that is looking. Well, for yeah, exactly. It's, um, you know, it is um, a luxury item. Yeah. And especially here in the UK, we're having a, a cost of living crisis right now. And people just aren't buying original art as much as they'd like to. So if people feel like they can support me by buying a card or a print or, you know, a tote bag or a magnet, then... Which I'm, I do, but I wanted to do it. I, I couldn't do it before the interview because yeah. that could be a conflict of interest. Do you know what right I mean? Now, of course, of course. Well, that's very nice of you. Otherwise, but, I've been here in one of your T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> But that would be wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just the reality of running a business. I can't, yeah. I, do, I do also take commissions, but they don't, you know, I'm not working constantly on, on commissions. It's yeah. just, you know, I've got bills to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what do you want to do as you look forward? What are some of your goals and ambitions as you go forward? Or, or have you find, found a place of, it sounds like you're very busy every day and, pretty content how dare you yeah uh, yeah <laughs> I, I would just like the business to keep growing it's very hard you know as i'm sure you know running a business when you're every single part of the business is very very um tricky and, and time consuming and i am very disciplined so i do put you know time aside to write i've got a mailing list and you know do all the admin stuff um but i just want to be able to keep painting and for my audience to grow you know it's getting much harder to get um seen on social media yes instagrams 
I mean, a, a huge dumpster fire with outreach and, you know, getting any audience there. So it's hard, it's really hard to build an audience. So I'd like my audience to get, get bigger. And I know that they're out there because it's grown in this time that I've been working, even just in the time that I've been full time. Um, but it, I just want to, I want to get better at painting. I've mm -hmm. since being on the show of my, my self portrait and the painting on the day was in acrylic and I only paint in oil now. And I hadn't start, I hadn't painted in oil until after the show because I knew, um, I knew that I, sh I, my style of painting suited oils so much and I just wasn't ready to make the commitment of it felt like I'd be starting again so I'd, I was putting it off and putting it off and since then I've, I've changed exclusively to oils and the work has I think has become radically different from it still has the same the same core mm -hmm. and the same light-heartedness behind it but I think that the work has got much better so I would just like to keep getting better Okay, well, probably cut this out, but for real art nerds, these are the real <laughs> nerds, and we have some of them. <laughs> what have you discovered about the difference in mediums? I, I'm a watercolor painter, so I don't know. I, I certainly know, you know, one is one is um, one dries a heck of a lot faster than the other. Yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly the drying uh -huh. um, time. I was doing everything using a whole bunch of different mediums to try and slow down. Oh. um the acrylic drying yeah it's just I, I like to be able to move paint around yeah i do and too. I, yeah. yeah like I, I want i'm not i'm not interested in photorealism or i want it to look like a painting and it's just so much um more dynamic with the oil paint that i can do that and you can really see the yeah. brush strokes and yeah it's just it is but it is mostly the drying time that i just find so much nicer to be able to step away and come back and still have that tangible mm -hmm. that I can change well, it. It's, it's going to be really exciting to, to for me to continue to watch and, and see what you do. I, I thank you so much for talking with me today. This has been mm -hmm. fascinating. Your work so clearly, gosh, you couldn't be more like your work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh that's really nice thank you so that's much amazing i but yeah. i think that's the real sign of a signature artist is um well first of all that your style is really consistent and consistent mm -hmm. over time it's like as i kept looking at the images i went i, I could see oh that's that's a tom painting that's a tom mm -hmm. painting, that's a tom. You, you know you can't even put your finger on exactly why but you know it's it's very identifiable and very oh, accessible cool. And the commitment to affordability, I just, you know, tip tip of the hat. Because no, it's, and being welcoming to to people um, asking these kinds of questions and to be, be I, accessible instead yeah, of, I, I guess. Yeah, I just think that um, just the art world in general is so intimidating, and especially if you're yeah. someone from the outside. I just want, I just want to be like, I just happen to be able to paint. And you can come and enjoy the paintings. You can look at them. You can own them. Like you don't have to have a degree or any knowledge of art history to be able to know what you do and don't like. So if I just get to be, at the very least, an entryway for someone to be like, I, I love paintings, yeah. and maybe my works made them a bit more comfortable with what they like, or asking questions about art, then that's. And that's great. It shouldn't just be for the elite people that have got all the knowledge, you know? Yes. Well, that's so beautifully stated. I have one more thing uh, I'll probably cut out, but this is like a story story, which is, I don't know if you remember somewhere on the interwebs, there was this uh, um, very famous violinist and he's playing in the subway and everybody's walking past. No one mm -hmm. him, right. And then mm -hmm. he's in hall like the next week or something. And, you know, got, and I thought, ah, oh, that's what Tom is. <laughs> All the same qualities in the goods, but he's not dressed in the, he doesn't have the tuxedo and the, I don't, I don't know exactly what the identity of an artist is, but I just got the feeling that it was, that wasn't something you were interested in. And I thought they're going to pick up on that. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, that's really nice of you to say. I'd much rather have that vibe than. I just think yeah. you know. Like I say I take I take painting and art very very seriously, but I can't. It's just it feels so silly to make it feel elitist in any way or that it's inaccessible. It's just you know. It's just I can paint and then someone else can play tennis or you know. It's just like it's just one of those amazing things that has happened, but it doesn't doesn't mean anything if people don't get to see it, you know? That's fantastic because as you probably know, being in the art world, some people are extremely protective about their process or about, you know, the magic sauce. Yeah. And, you know, the only magic sauce is time on task and commitment. You know, that's the magic yeah. sauce. <laughs> truly, truly. Yeah. 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 It's only been these last couple of years that I've, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I, look back at work from even you know a few years ago and I'm just like oh I can't believe I showed anyone <laughs> that's so and I'm trying to get better at um recognizing that just because I've changed or, my, or I feel like I've gotten better it doesn't take away any of the value me saying oh that's really rubbish that I painted while someone's got it hanging on their wall yes. it's just really disrespectful I don't so I'm trying to get better at just you know being like things are changing and and I'm moving on without feeling just a deep shame and embarrassment that I showed anyone in the first place. <laughs> you made me realize, you know, that in some ways being an artist is an identity crisis over and over and over again. <laughs> just on repeat, day after day after day. Because we, we can't not do it, you know? We just can't not do it. So, well, thank you so, so much. It's going to take me a while to edit this um, well, let's do a formal goodbye and then I'll say goodbye to you in person, person. Okay. So thank you, Tom, so much for talking with me today. And we had to reschedule a few times and I just appreciate that so much. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much for asking me. It's been a real pleasure. Okay.